Hi everyone, welcome here to Bonn at Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Europe for, the, for our red sofa and red carpet interviews where we're talking to some of our key VIPs and speakers here at the event about the topics of the day. And I'm very pleased to be welcomed to welcome uh, Michael Nicolaitis, who's the Senior Vice President for Production Network and Supply Chain Management at the MW Group, who's just given us a keynote on why logistics should be a competitive advantage and a differentiator for OEMs like BMW. Um, Michael, uh, I want to just pick up first on one of the key points you made, which is that the era of unabated free trade, unhindered free trade is, is, is over as we, as we deal with more friction, deal with more barriers. Um, what are some of the ways that you're responding to this uh, increased friction, working with your logistics providers and teams to, to overcome it? Yeah, as, as I pointed out, the, like in the long run, we have to influence our sourcing decisions. But in the short term, in the short run, we have to be flexible. We have to find alternative routes. We have always uh, pre to prepare for the unknown unknowns. Um, let's let's take an uh, example like the outbound logistics. We have to we have to implement uh, additional ports, for example, and that's something uh, we have to work on together. And uh, I'm looking forward to do that. Yeah, so definitely collaborating with your partners and anticipating these issues. One of the things you, you mentioned is um, enhancing your control tower. Uh, I believe you have more digital functions in that. Control towers aren't new in the industry, but it seems, seems a key focus area and a pillar for BMW. Can you talk a little bit more about that digital control tower and, and how it's helping to inform and, and enhance your supply chain management? Yeah, during the, the crisis, what, what, what we really learned is there's two things which are very, very important. You have to have the right information. If you have too much information, you get lost into uh, in information. And the other thing is you have to have real-time information because you have to take decisions very quickly. And that's something which we implemented during the last couple of years and uh, which we have to automate through something like Catena X where we share data in an automated fashion. So it's, it's, it's a, a point at which to bring this information together, but then looking still at other ways to, to improve the flow of that information and automate exactly. that. So bringing together uh, some of the points when we've been talking about, this friction and, and, and information, I mean, localization and regionalization of the supply chain seemingly is becoming a key, bigger, bigger focus here as well. How, and you also mentioned in your keynote, logistics really should, should lead on making some of these or informing on some of these decisions. How are you working and working differently with other departments purchasing, R&D, manufacturing, et cetera, to, to try to take more lead on, on making some of the, and influencing these decisions? Yeah, we, we, it's, 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 it's a change of mindset in the end. Like, we have to accept that we cannot predict the future at an accuracy level that we were used to. So we have to get a mindset and say, hey, taking into account that something might happen which we, which we don't plan for, what then is the right solution? And we're doing that um, in intense collaboration with our um, purchasing colleagues. But we also have to develop systems like uh, probability uh, for occurrence of some events in order to get something where we can decide on, because otherwise it's just a gut feeling which cannot be the basis for a business decision. And that's the way forward we are doing uh, within BMW. So yeah, as you mentioned, having the right information but changing the mindset uh, is such a, such a key point here um, because we, we, we can't account for all of those risks and stuff. So they have to be ready perhaps in some cases to pay more to address that risk. Finally, I wanted to come on to sustainable transport, green technology, which is, you know, you have some, some active pilots, which you highlighted, whether in hydrogen trucks or, or electric trucks. Um, are some of these pilots already pointing towards or leading towards uh, scaled application? Uh, clearly not the electric trucks or hydrogen trucks yet, but are there examples you're already seeing where pilots are, are, are jumping into the ability to scale across your supply chain? I think it's 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 similar to the to the uh, passenger car sector we have to be technology open because you cannot know whether or not the electric truck is yeah. the solution or the hydrogen truck i'm convinced it probably is a combination of both yeah. so we have to we have to have pilots we have to be active there and then we have to partner with our um, with our suppliers um, in order to get this uh, right regulations and also the infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, there are ways for a sustainable truck logistics in the future. 
to, to, yeah, absolutely need all those points to come together. So maybe just the final point when you have a pilot, what, what, what are some of the signals to you that you would look for to say, ah, here we can apply this in a, in a, in a bigger sense? I mean, clearly cost and implementation is one factor, uh, but as we mentioned, some of the mindset needs to change. What, what, what are some of the key signals for, for really taking a pilot into, into scale? Yeah, the, the first and the basis is do we do we reach the same level of operational excellence as with common technology? That that's the basis, and then if we get an idea how with scaling that pilot we would come to an efficiency level comparable to the level we have right now, that's the two things where I say, hey, now now it's getting really really interesting. Well, we're excited to learn more about the interesting things to come. Uh, it's an exciting time to be leading BMW's supply chain and taking such a strategic role in the company. Michael, thank you so much for, for sharing that with our audience and now in our Red Sofa interview. Uh, we really wish you the best on this and look forward to keeping up with you. Thanks to keep, keep following us here on, on LinkedIn and our channels, we're bringing more insights from, from the event and what's happening in the European industry right from the Red Sofa. So thanks a lot.